Ah yes, the ocean. Seven seas filled to the brim with the most wondrous animals, ranging from the small ever adorable pufferfish all the way to the grand blue whale. I absolutely love sea life and all the marvelous things that transpire right beneath the surface. I mean, Sebastian said it best himself. And yet, there is nothing more on earth I fear than the same thing I love so dear. The ocean is like that bitch from Harry Potter. On the surface, we see an average looking dude, smooth, clean, blah, blah, blah. Then you take a look a little deeper and holy fuck, what the fuck is that? Today, I thought we'd take a look at some of the most horrific creatures to ever inhabit the deep blue. Today, let's explore that which lurks below. Alright, first up we have the oh my What the fuck is that? Whenever I just get down in the dumps because I've been rejected by yet another girl, and I think of myself as just undesirable, ugly, all that stuff, I just look at this motherfucker and say, Wow, it could be worse. It could always be worse. This is the stargazer. It is an insane fish, alright? It is an ambush predator. It hides in the sand. It has two eyes on the top of its head so that it sees upwards. So when a fish comes over it, it jumps up and grabs them with this really, really freaky mouth that's also upwards facing. I've never seen a fish like this. Not only that, but these things are fucking venomous. Because why not? Because they didn't have enough going on for them. All right? Because God was like, you know what? I give you, I give you this. You get, the I don't know why God talks like that. Um, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> And that's not the end of it. There are two specific species, such as this one right here, which is the Ostrophs, blah, 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 how you pronounce it, which also can give off an electric shock. Yes, really. This thing's a freaking poison electric type Pokemon. It's insane. I mean, you talk about like, a, it's like an RPG, you're spending an hour on the stats, and it's only spending like a minute on the character's appearance. <gasps> One of my favorite animals is also objectively one of the creepiest, and that would be the lamprey. Somebody say lamp! No, no, Mark, I, mean, I said lamprey. My disappointment is measurable, and my day is ruined. Anyways, as I was saying, the lamprey is a species of jawless fish, with the largest of its species being known to grow upwards of four feet long and are. Where do lampreys come from? Well, when a papa leech and a mama eel love each other very much, they. Hug each other so tight until the stork brings them a baby! Well, you're close. You see, they actually. And then they Oh, we're not even at the best part. Afterward, they Yeah, that's what happens when you interrupt me. Anyways, as I was saying, despite their appearance, lamprey are not in fact related to the eels nor leeches, though they do serve a similar role as leeches, with both species being parasites of their respective ecosystem. You see, the lamprey survives by attaching itself to a living organism and sucking their blood and other bodily fluids as its primary food source. It's literally the vampire of the sea as it sucks away the life of- Uh-huh, Dracula don't suck. Dracula scrape with his fangs and lick up the blood. Like this. <laughs> See? Okay, y yes, yeah, sorry, Dracula, sorry. As I was saying, yes, so the lamprey used their funnel-shaped mouths filled with over a hundred teeth to clasp itself to a victim and slowly suck away the life of those unfortunate enough to become their unwilling hosts. Though there are also some species that primarily feed on the carcasses of dead fish. And some that actually don't eat at all, and rather live off the reserve they ate as larvae. While rare, there are reports of people being targeted by these slimy suckers. They truly are horrific, yet awe-inspiring creatures in my personal opinion. While most people know them from their standout appearance in Finding Nemo, the anglerfish is much more than what's briefly shown in the movie. Anglerfish come in all different shapes and sizes, each one more horrifyingly hideous than the last. But in my opinion, the most interesting thing about these bioluminescent bastards is the extreme sexual dimorphism displayed in the species. For those of you that don't know, sexual dimorphism is when different sexes of the same species exhibit different characteristics that can be as simple as the plumage of a duck, or in the anglerfish's case, Yes, the anglerfish is the literal definition of a muscle mommy. <laughs> Only the female anglerfish possesses the famous bioluminescent lures that they're mostly known for, as the role of the male is to literally just breed and die thereafter. The female anglerfish is truly a feminist icon. If the males fail to attach themselves to a female, they do not mature and simply perish. Fun fact, that's gonna happen to me soon! This is the Stomiidae, or the Stomiidae, or the Stomidae, it depends, I don't, I really don't know the correct pronunciation, but we'll just call it, its other nickname, the Dragonfish. Yes, another Pokemon on this list. Ooh, no. la, la, la. 
this creature is just one in a million. Dragonfish also have barbs just like the anglerfish, except instead of on top of their head, it's on their chin, like a little, little goatee kind of guy. It's like hipster fish. And just like the anglerfish, it is also bioluminescent. Now, seeing this fish, you'd think it's huge, and yet it's not actually. They only grow up to about a foot long, most times even shorter. Don't let that fool you because they are deadly predators. It has a super flexible jaw that allows it to engulf prey that's far larger than themselves, which is helpful because it lives in an environment with such a limited amount of food. Now, the most interesting thing about the dragonfish comes from a story from nearly a century ago involving biologist William Beebe. On September 22, 1932, William and his colleague Otis Bardum descended 2,100 feet below off the coast of Bermuda. It is here where they observed what is arguably the most credible cryptid sighting of all time. In the vast darkness, the two of them witnessed two six-foot-long bioluminescent creatures, which he later classified as a member of the dragonfish family. He pronounced this new species as Bathysphera intacta, otherwise known as a giant dragonfish. While there isn't any footage of the creatures, and the specimen has never been witnessed all these years since, William was not just some ordinary guy. William Beebe was an extremely well-respected biologist in his field who discovered 87 new species of fish and one new species of bird. And there's so much more I'd want to say about this man, but I don't want to drag this out too long. Just know that he is someone who wouldn't just go about making this stuff up. And I also just wanted to quickly mention that he was a friend of my lord and savior, Theodore Roosevelt, and any friend of his is a friend of mine. So yes, I do believe the giant dragonfish is real, and I hope I never meet it. <laughs> last, we've reached the bottom of the ocean where we meet our final organism of the day. Now imagine this. You're out on a safari adventure when you come across the carcass of a large, mighty elephant. A fear runs through your spine, not of what could have possibly taken down this great beast, but rather what is currently feasting upon its rotting mass. As you take a closer look, you see thousands of small red tendrils squirming all throughout the body. And these mysterious creatures are not eating through its flesh, no. They're eating through its bones. This is what scientists discovered in 2002 when they could do nothing but stare beyond in horror as thousands of these minuscule monsters were discovered living and feasting upon the carcass of a rotting whale nearly 9,500 feet below. This is the Osidex, also known as the zombie worm. These two inch long serpentine devils produce acid which they use to burrow into the bones of creatures and suck out the nutrients from within. With the species name Osidex, literally being Latin for bone eater, is there anything more horrifying than the notion of your body lost at sea sinking to the lowest depths of the pitch black endless night that is the bottom of the ocean? As thousands of these worms eat away at your remains, devouring every last fiber of your existence. With traces being found within the fossil remains of the great plesiosaur, these ancient animals have been here far longer than us, and will exist far longer than that. Hopefully within that time they don't want to crawl their way up here and live with us on land. Well that was fun! In all seriousness, while these creatures are undoubtedly beautiful and horrific, there is no need to ever fear them. I mean, for every one anglerfish, you get a thousand derpy blobfish. So, uh, there, there's really no need to... Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, where am I? Okay, I'm sorry. Can I please just go home now? Home? Um, ah, uh, yes. God's great in Earth. What a foolish phrase. The ocean makes up 70% of Earth's surface, and yet you foolishly tricked yourselves into believing that your small sliver of inhabitable land is somehow more significant than the vast blue. No. You're slaves to the sea. I totally respect that. You're 100% right. I'm sorry if I offended you. I, I really appreciate it if you could just let me go back to land and- I accept your apology. Of course you're free to return to your land. Enjoy it while you can. What, what, what do you mean? Oh, you don't know? The earth is changing, son. Soon enough, the luscious green man you came for granted all these years will find itself drowned in despair. Hell was never a pit of fire. It was, and will always be, the water. Oh my god. No. Not god. 